Welcome to the DeepFace Lab 2.0 XEG masking tutorial. In this video, I'll show you how to use the XEG editor to draw the masks on your face and then how to train the model so it can be applied to the face sets. I'll also go over a few ways of dealing with obstructions, how to make backups of the masks, and how to use the generic pre trained XEG mask to speed up the entire process. So, what is XEG? If you've watched my previous tutorial on face set extraction, you'll know that each face will include a default mask generated during extraction. Deep Face Lab includes a masking tool called XSIG, which allows you to specify which area of the image is the face or the background. This mask is used during model training and later on for merging the final image. Using XSIG will result in a better composition and increased likeness to the source face set, more realistic eye movement and mouth movement, better skin detail and color. XSIG also allows you to exclude obstructions such as hands, hair, glasses, piercings, tattoos, and so on. While the default mask may be useful for smaller face types, larger face types such as whole face and head do require a custom mask for the best result. Additionally, a custom mask is recommended when using the model training style powers and color transfer modes. So the fastest way to get started with XEG is to apply a pre-trained mask to your face set. Deep Face Lab includes a generic whole face XEG mask. You can also pre-train your own or download one. You'll find these generic mask files in the internal slash model generic XEG folder. To apply the masks to your images, run the file 5.xeg generic data DST whole face mask apply, and the same for the source. Now remember, this is a whole face type mask and may not work the same on other face types. This generic mask is a good starting point for many projects. However, there may be difficulty with extreme angles and dark, blurry, or heavily obstructed faces. Before getting too deep into XEG, it's important that you understand some basic terminology. The process of drawing the masks is called labeling, as in labeling data. The lines and points that define the mask those are called polygons. We can edit, fetch, or remove these polygons from the images. The trained mask is a model produced by the XEG trainer. We can apply or remove the trained mask. The applied mask is embedded in the face set image and will be used during model training. Then we have the learned mask, which is created as part of the deepfake model and can be used during the final merging process. So to create your own XSEG mask, you'll need to label some faces with mask polygons, then train the XSEG model and apply it to your face sets. Open the XSEG editor by running the file 5.xsig data DST mask edit. You'll see the XSEG splash screen, and once the destination images have loaded, you'll be able to use the interface. First, let's go over the XSEG UI. In the center, of course, is the current image canvas, where you will label the polygons. Below that is the current file name, and an image carousel with buttons for navigating to the previous and next files. Over to the right of the image file name, you will see the count of labeled images. In the bottom right corner, there is a trash can you can click to delete the current image. The main polygon tools you'll be using are listed along the left hand side. There are two drawing modes. Poly include mode and poly exclude mode. Poly include means drawing the area that includes part of the image, creating an inclusion mask around the face. Poly exclude mode means excluding part of the image, which I'll come back to later on. You can easily undo and redo points, delete the entire polygon, and switch the cursor pointer mode to add or delete points. On the right hand side are the mask preview tools. You can view the XEG trained mask, which, if applied first, will appear as a gray overlay on the background with a transparent area over the face. You can choose a red, green, or blue color for the polygons to suit your preference. You can also view the baked in, aka drawn polygon mask, or the applied XEG mask, as simple alpha channel images. Finally, we have the cursor lock, which will keep the cursor centered while moving the image around instead. I'm going to start by labeling some of the easier faces that are clear, fully exposed, and not obstructed. Once you have your image, choose a comfortable starting point and direction to work around the face. 
use the left mouse button to place points along the edge of the face. The mouse wheel will zoom in and out, recentering the image on the cursor. Use Ctrl Z to undo previous points. Continue to follow the edge of the face and hairline until you've put a mask around the entire face. When you're finished labeling the face, you can then modify the polygon by moving, adding, or deleting points. Use the A and D keys or the on-screen arrows to scroll through the images. You can hold down the Shift key to scroll even faster, and if you hold down the Control key, this will skip to images that have already been labeled. As you work through the face set, try to keep the mask shape somewhat consistent by following a similar path around the jaw and hairline in each image. With smaller face types, you should follow the jawline and cut across the forehead just above the eyebrows. When using a head type face set, you'll need to include the entire face, ears, hair, and optionally part of the neck. Thin or moving hair will be difficult to deep fake, so you may want to refine them in post-processing. There's no need to focus on making a very precise mask with hundreds of points. A few dozen will do. Instead, spend your time by labeling a variety of faces throughout the face set yaw, pitch, and color ranges. You should also label a variety of facial expressions, such as with open and closed mouth, and with eyes looking in different directions. You can close the editor and use the sorting tool to reorder the images, making sure that you have a good spread of labeled faces. It's recommended that you label at least a few dozen faces in both the source and the destination face sets. Now let's talk about obstructions in front of the face and how to exclude them from the mask area. There are two methods that will produce basically the same result. Choosing one is simply a matter of your preference. The first method is to draw the polygon around the face following the edge of the obstruction itself. The second method is to draw the polygon around the face as you normally would, and then draw another polygon around the obstruction object in exclusion mode. Press the W key or click the icon to switch to exclusion mode and draw a polygon around the object. This method will remove any part of the obstruction that intersects with or is inside the face polygon. Now, it's very important to remember that when using the exclusion mode, you absolutely must draw an inclusion mask around the face. Do not label a face with only an exclusion mask. Press the Q key or use the icon to switch back to the include mode. You should also label the obstruction on a variety of frames. Keep in mind that any changes you make to the shape of the mask will affect training and merging of the deepfake face. After you've labeled a bunch of images, you can close the XSIG editor. And now you can fetch a backup of your labeled faces by running the file 5.xsig data DST mask fetch, and the same for the source. This will copy all of the XSIG labeled files to the data DST slash aligned XSIG folder, and you'll be asked if you want to delete the original files. If you use the file 5.xsig data DST mask remove, this will completely remove all XSIG labels you have created and restore the default mask. Let me repeat, this will delete the polygons you have drawn and cannot be undone. The next step in the process is to train the XSIG model so that it can create a mask based on the labels you've provided. Run the file 5.xsig train and choose a hardware device from the list. And set the face type to be the same as your face set. It's likely you can use the highest batch size. However, if training fails, you can run at a lower batch size. Now, the command window will show the training progress as numerical values, while the preview window will show the images and masks being trained. You can use the spacebar to cycle through the different previews, and use the P key to generate the current preview. You'll be able to see the transformations being applied to the images as the trainer attempts to match the labels to the face set. At first, the mask will be misshapen and choppy, but after some time, you'll notice the mask take on a consistent shape with a defined edge. The model will automatically be saved every 25 minutes. However, you can also press the S key to save the training, or the Enter key to save and exit. So now the XSIG mask has been trained, but to use the mask, you must first apply it to the face set images. Run the file 5.xsig data DST trained mask apply and select the device to use. If you have more than one GPU, you can use it to apply the source face set mask at the same time. 
Otherwise, apply the source mask afterward by running the file 5.exig data src trained mask apply. Once the masks are applied, you can begin or continue training your deepfake model. However, I do suggest you check the applied exeg mask first. Open the exeg editor again and use the backtick or tilde key to toggle the applied mask. Using the A and D keys, scroll through the images and create new face labels where needed. Run the exeg trainer again, apply the masks, and repeat the process until the applied mask is relatively clean. It doesn't have to be perfect because it will be trained in the deepfake trainer. You can remove the applied mask and return to that default mask by using the files 5.exeg data dst trained mask remove and 5.exeg data src trained mask remove. This will not affect the polygon labels you have drawn, it will simply remove the applied mask and return the default mask. Well, that's all for now on Exig, but hey, if you found this video useful, go ahead and give it a like. Then head over to deepfakevfx.com where I've got a full Deepface Lab 2.0 guide along with models and face sets you can download for your deepfakes.